Same thing my mother read to me out of the Bible. It becomes very real. I mean, how can two people not even see each other before know, know what, the, what the same Bible is talking about without reading the Bible? Same Bible. Well, I trust the Lord sitting on the very back pew of that church and went forward. And the people there didn't really know how to deal with me. They said, why are you coming? They said, you're going to join the church? I said, yes, that's what I'm coming for. 
I didn't know how it works. I didn't know I, I didn't know the church language they used. All I knew is I wanted Christ. And I trust the Lord that night. I was saved, born again, on the way to heaven. Had a new life. All because I went to church and I heard the gospel. The good news. What is the good news? Word of God. It's truth. Tell me any other book that you can find in flaws and you can't find it here. It's the truth. Then take it to the bank. <laughs> yes, sir. Anyway, I went home and I told him, see, my mother was Christian, but my dad was not a Christian. And I knew I had something that he didn't have. And from that time until he got saved, I worked on his case. When I went to church, I went to the Middle Old Baptist Church, and we were having revival going. It was like a revival every day at our church. At this time, I was 16 years of age, moved down here to Dallas. And I heard the claims of Christ being preached. And I saw the crowds greater. And I saw them growing each and every day. I mean, this is when the Brother Halls first came to the Middle Road Baptist Church. And when we had five boys, I said, let's start a prayer meeting on Saturday night. Little behold, I did not know what this would lead to. Five boys, but in a very short time, we had a young people's department that you couldn't even believe. We had to harm an evangelist to come and pitch the big tent right on the middle of the parking lot for just the young people on Sunday morning. We couldn't build the churches fast enough because of what was taking place and what was happening. A miracle on the middle of the road, that's one. When that happened, we started singing. The girl said, it's not fair that we that we can't come. And you don't invite us, so we invited them. They started coming, and we had the piano player. We had the singers. We had a full-fledged church. From the time we started, I was the one to invite the Christian preacher to speak to the young people. Son, you think I didn't get some people shelled corn? Huh? <laughs> yes, sir. They shelled corn. Billy Dudley went was going to Decatur Bible College. And oh, he was great. He would preach the truth, the word of God, and we would have a great time. I had him back many times. And from the time that started, look here, we were I was 16 at the time. I held that same position all the way through until I was 21, until I married. When the young people started going everywhere, we, was, we would go out to witness. We would broadcast. We would go everywhere, just speaking, witnessing, and winning souls to the Lord. It was our daily chores. It was like the Bible in Jerusalem, whenever they had revival, or the churches of the Old Testament, the New Testament. Hey, it was like we were living that day because Middle Road was alive and it was well and it was on fire. And people were coming to see us burn because we had something that was burning for us through Christ. I love my Lord tonight. I love the Lord because he's heard my prayers, my supplication. And when I bow ear to him, he hears me. When I pray to him, he hears me. He walks with me and he talks with me and tells me I'm his own. And when we would we'd come together, we sang all the old hymns. We sang all the old songs of praise and love. 
We had many of other people that was going to other churches at that time. Brother Ed Oates was a godly man. He was my age, a little bit younger, just a little bit younger. He was an evangelist. He held revivals all over Garland in the Baptist churches. There'd be so many people in the small churches that have the windows and people outside the in. And everybody was hearing about how he preached. And he preached. And then, from over in Arlington, there was a Baptist pastor that had been holding a revival all week. And they were ending on that Saturday night. And he had Eddie to come preach that Saturday night. And when he preached, I'd never heard shouting and praising the Lord like this Baptist pastor's wife did. And he said, Eddie, if you can hold, if you can preach the next week, we want to extend this revival for a whole other week. And they did. And there was great results. When the word of God is preached, it's like fire in the bones. I mean, it, it does something to you. It heals you. It blesses you. Makes you want to do something. Yes, sir. For all these, for all those years, I took Eddie to many revivals and worked with him. We would see many people come to the Lord in small churches. Before, before the week would be over, we would have it filled and packed up. We'd have many people come. We'd see many results. And where Eddie went to school at, in Garland High School, right across from where Jack in the Box is there, <laughs> you won't believe this. Many uh, the other boys that were going to other churches in dead churches heard him and heard him saw what he was doing and they would come visit us and they would join our church. You ever heard of the Hartsfields? Norman Hartsfield? David Hartsfield that we support on the mission field? Both of them have his son on the mission field. And Carl has been a pastor all this time and, 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 and David, his son, started a school, Christian school out in West Texas. He's retired from it now. He's the many old. I've been there twice to see him. After a lot of them went away to college, the preacher boys, I took him and we were gold witnessing every Saturday night. You wouldn't believe the places we went. We would go everywhere. And then we would go to the beer joints, the honky tonks, and watch this. You know what we'd do? We'd go in there and pass our tracks to everybody in there. A lot of times I see young, young men in there. I say, do you parents do this? Does your parents know that you're in here? And under conviction, without even saying any more, they'd get up and leave. Listen, somebody needs to care about this generation, about this place where we're at today. <coughs> and at Mill Road, we were having revival every week. Souls were being saved. People were coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. They were making a real difference in the church. In four years, we were running over the I mean, we, we, we were building buildings all the time. We started the mini building, and I mean, we filled that thing up. Boom. I've seen it in the mini building before we ever got to another building built. But there were so many people that came that Sunday that the people came. There was enough to go all the way around the congregation holding hands, just got saved. We were baptizing. We were being written up in the Miracle of Middle Road and all this. Today, it still holds true. 
you preach the gospel and you see results and you see revivals in the hearts of people and you'll see a change. Have y'all stopped witnessing? I've never stopped. Everywhere I go, I tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. I see what God can do. And He does it. When I went to work at Tim Kawara Craft, I was 18 years old. 18 years old. I had a I worked in the quality control inspection department. I had the low run of the plant. A lot of people came to see me and talk to me. I checked for cracks and defects in hearts. If there was something going on on the line, I'd go tell them. I'd say, hey, you're grinding too hard or something. The word gets out. Hey, go to him. He'll tell you what's going on, why we're having this trouble. It, isn't it a lot easier to stop the trouble than to keep on doing it and just reject it? Huh? Makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. See, people has been in this area. They know what's going on. <clears throat> there was another Kimball that worked there. There was L.C. McKean. There was a lot of others that worked there. Every day when I would go, I'd, I'd, I'd have prayer and I'd play with my food. And everybody got where they'd come there every day. We met the same place, same time, and even. I invited these people to come to church. Elsie McCain, Miller Campbell. One became an evangelist, the other became a deacon in our church. Both of them got saved. And that both of them have passed away now. Their wives are still in. Both of them. What a difference that makes. Can you imagine a person going out into eternity without Christ, without a hope in the world? We don't have to be that way. This right here tells us a whole plan of what we need to do. Look up. Cry out loud. Let things happen. God loves you. And He'll save you and He'll forgive you all your sins. Little Father down the line. When we grew and we had a lot more members. Every week there would be people coming that got saved out on this station. And our church was growing. And it was being written up in all the papers about what was happening, what was taking place. And some of the big stake churches tried to make light of it, tried to lie about, tell, tell lies about why the church was growing. Said we didn't support the mission. We support them the same way they were they was talking all about that. And Brother Powell more or less rebuked him, but he said, Why? 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 Well, what is all this? To all the missions were given. This world has a way of turning things to make it look bad when it's good. And we don't check it out. God's good. I mean, all you have to do is check out the Word. Is it the Word of God? Does it still read the same? And all the time I worked, and look here, all the time I worked at, and I went from uh, Timco Aircraft, after four years I was there. This is on Dell like four years. Our church is really grown now. I went to Dallas Automotive. I was there 10 years in quality control. I thought, man, it was pretty good to start eating and praying with all the people. Did the same thing over there. I said, I'm going to start 
teaching you. I started in Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and God saw the light. Yeah, it was good. And the darkness comprehended not so far. Look, those men started, and they got into it. They come every, every time, every day. What's better than the Word of God? It got the attention. When I filled up my booth, it was a, it was like a big garage. I drove my big engine out so we'd have room to sit on the floor. <laughs> and after I filled that, when I filled that room up, look here. I was out ten years. I said, I'm going to preach to you every Wednesday. I started preaching the Word of God. The other people started going out. Hey, he said, can you come here? This man's preaching. The secretary and treasurer of the planet, James Sparks, a godly man. I did, see, I didn't know it. He was working with the uh, uh, people down there in, 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 the, in the Bible. And Henry McGee was the owner of the planet. He stood one head taller than I did. He came, and they were standing back there and listened. And my brother came out there and worked two months one time, and he was he was coming. And all oh, the joy, the change that started taking place. Right out in my booth here, there's all these people with all the benches and the, and their cigar smoke. And I smoke wool. Hey, if you ever really breathe that stuff, I'm in a booth that cuts it out with our condition running right over. And I could look out, but they couldn't look in. <laughs> you can see what was going on. I'm saying our God's good. We don't. Let him take control like we ought to. He wants to. He wants to work through us and accomplish his purpose. If we try to run our little agenda, sometimes it'll fail. But his one. After 10 years of preaching there, I went to Bell Helicopter. I worked there four years before I quit. And was going to go into some other things. And that's when the bottom dropped out from the wars and things. You couldn't get no money out, couldn't do nothing. And so I wound up working for the McIntyres in the church. I saw home improvement. I saw everything. Carpet, I sold houses by the carpet load. <laughs> And we had a man there in our church that was so carpet. And I was selling so much carpet, and I said, hey, I'd like to get you to lay our carpet instead of some other carpet players. You know? And he, he wanted he liked that. He said, man, I'm not doing enough business to do nothing, you know. He said, I want to go out with you. I want to go with you one time. I just want to see how you do it. And I kid you not, he went with me. I knocked on the door on the trellis, right over, right real close to LaFon Drive Baptist Church. I sold a house full of carpet and central heat in there all the same time. In 20 minutes, I was out. And I didn't do all this measuring. When you walk in a room, you can tell just about within a few hours how much that yard is going to take if you do it all the time. He says, you're not going to measure it? I said, no, man. You, if you measure it this way, it's going to come out different if you measure it this way instead. Because you got waste and stuff. He could not believe that. From then on, I kept him busy. And I was selling everything. Central air, air carpet, siding, roofing, insulation. I sold about three insulations a week. 
Raw war. You know what that is? For your house? It's insulation. Did you know you can take a little piece, no fighter than my fan hand right there, put it in your hand, and put a penny there, and get a torch and turn it red hot, and you won't feel that heat? Did you know that? Never tried it. <laughs> Nobody said it. <laughs> Most instructions, they just go, they burn up. But rock wool is different. God's good. And then, when our buildings started being finished and getting bigger and bigger, it was in a very short time we were the biggest, largest church in God. When God's in it, things will happen. Mm -hmm. God is in it. Not only that, but look at all the preacher boys. We had so many preacher boys coming out on the road. They went out and they started a single Baptist church, and they started out there in Grand Road Baptist Church, and they started all the missions. We had 21 missions at one time that our preacher boys were filling. They already went away to college and come back. There was an explosion. When people go out like that, they mean business. Our young people, we were getting buses. Even after Brother Bob came down here, we were getting buses and go witnessing everywhere. Leading people to the Lord. We would even go out and challenge people that was playing football way over in South Dallas. We'd challenge them to the game. Then we'd witness to them after we got through playing. What a difference. What a desire to see real truth and light in people. I love the Lord of Why? Because he's what? Heard my prayer of supplication. Makes a real difference. You was there all that time. <laughs> yeah. Made a difference. Made a difference. When uh, I was raised on form till I was 21 years of age, Right out there, a white rock lake, from Plano to Aldea, to from Keasley to on both sides of the Northwest Highway we formed. Cotton and corn. They grow anything, but cotton and corn was always a money cross. David Goforth, we lived on his place. Before we moved to Oklahoma, and we came back to that same place and formed that for years. After my dad uh, quit work, he had cancer. David tried to get my dad and Jack and three, I mean, uh, two other guys, farmers, that stayed with him all those years. He wanted to build a house for him down there, and, and he'd already hired Jackie to do the labor on the farm. And he wanted to come down there, but my dad was just dying with cancer. And the others were already uh, all older men. But he just wanted to take care of them. And you'd hear, you'd hear all kinds of stories about what they said about Tamil Road for and the Model T. And uh, I, I, rode, I rode in the Model T from the time I was little. And I rode in that same one after David moved down there at uh, Athens. I took it 
took my dad, went as soon as my dad would get out of uh, chemotherapy in the hospital there in Dora, and said, let's go to Jackie's. He wanted to get away from all this stuff. And he would feel good as soon as they took him off that chemotherapy. We would go down there, and Brother James, my dad, he went with us <coughs> from the reformers. My dad and my dad. We went down there, and my dad lost us. You think that thing will still run? Just walking through that, and that little tea was in the door. He said, let's get in see. <laughs> we got in that mock tea. We went down the road. He said, let's go, get this. go down there and get a coat. He was about three miles down there to his country store. We went down there and bought us a coat. Went back. This is what makes life. There's people that's friends for life. I think of so many people out there that I would do anything for and they do anything for me. Life is wonderful. It's something that jails in you that you notice for sure. It's true. And when we face eternity, we can say, Thy word have I needed in my heart, and I might not send it to steal. He died to pay our sins. We're his children. We love him. We're blessed. And we have a reason for having a testimony to tell this world that Jesus lives. I have a son and two daughters, I did. My oldest daughter was Suzanne Sainz, who passed away with cancer. And many of you was there when she was our church pianist. She, was, she raised up and James Cook every Sunday in his big crowd. Man, he had about 450 people, kids that he taught every Sunday. That's a shocker to a lot of churches. They don't even know what to do. And then, look here. Brother Hawes went from here to Hammond, Indiana, First Baptist Church. He lost nearly all the members there when he first went up there. But he had over 30,000 members. You hear that? And all of us who have been up there, we know what, we know how big it was. We know how huge it was. This was before all the humongous churches ever got out. And I think about all the people that's been saved. Brother Bob was in there, was reached through the ministry of Brother Jack Hollis. He was working at a steel mill, welding boxcars. And he said one night, about 35 young men came in singing a cappella and passing out tracks. I believe it said in about two weeks he was saved. He was 19 years old on drugs. God saved him. And you look, you look at what, what God's done through him. I think about the truth that he pours out every Sunday to us every time he speaks, preaches. It's truth, the word of God. Thy word, thy word. When I went home that night, saw all those stars, and I couldn't, I really couldn't comprehend it all. When I went home and told my mother and dad, I was like, man, God's good. I've been active telling people about the Lord ever since. Have you ever seen me without tracks in my pocket? Hey, hey, it's real. Where I work at Dallas, they call me, I drive a school bus, and I do field trips. I have witnessed to literally 
hundreds out there. Perfect place. You got the teacher on the bus, or you got the coach on the bus, and you've got all the ball players on the bus. Sometimes I be driving along, I say, hey, maybe just like on Monday, I say, how many of y'all went to church yesterday on Sunday? The last time I asked that, every hand went up at three. Every hand went up at three. Wow. That's more than I expected, really. <laughs> I didn't expect that many to work. But that shows you what's going on in the hearts of people. And also it shows you where the catches are. I get to talk a lot of times if you have the same teacher who goes with you all the time on different things, you get to know them. You get to talk to them about the Lord and find out they're Christian. And if you ever stop to eat, you say, ma'am, can I, you mind if I ask the blessing? Sure. And nearly every time the teacher will ask the students, do you mind if Brother Wright asks the blessing? And all of them agree. That's a way of getting, way of getting into people's hearts. Let them know there's something about God that we need to look and pay attention to. Because we miss so much in life. You look at the teenagers today, see what they are doing. Looking at these things you play on TV and all this kind of stuff. Hey, they're not, they're not winning friends there. Yeah. And a lot of them are caught out on all these games, the videos that they play. I see people that cannot shut that thing off. You ever, you, ever, you ever notice around your house when people come in? Hey, they play it all night for them. Shouldn't be done. But I, because I tell you right now, they won't want to get up the next morning at six o'clock like you do to go to work. Makes a little difference, don't it? That's where the car meets the road, or something like that. <laughs> yeah. God is good, and He's able. Well, what time are we supposed to stop? Is it 15 after or what? Uh, he said between 8 and 10 after. Well, let's, I'm going to keep going to it. Okay. Anyway, started with five boys at Miller Road, and I remember filling up a great <coughs> huge tent. I mean, a huge tent on the parking lot with just young people. Had evangelists come every Sunday to preach to us, and the other building was full. In 1957, the whole wall of Miller Road was knocked out. And we doubled it. Over 2,200, I think, or something like that. And look here. My wife and I got married August 30, 1957. That's one of the years days. And my, my brother and his wife just got married about a month before that. And we had a reception down at his house. And you know what people did to us? They jacked my car up and put <coughs> two, two big old trash cans behind it. You know what I did? I went back there and just pushed that thing off and jumped in and took off. <laughs> I was laying them trash cans over all over the road. <laughs> That's life. That's life. You get out of life what you put in it. And God's good. Listen, I, just, I would like to see a lot more things happen like what I've done in different places where I work. It changes the whole atmosphere. Yeah. When I was in National Guard, listen to this. When I was in National Guard, I went down there when I was 18 years old. I'm bug 
private. I mean, I don't know what you call it when you're on those tracks. <laughs> anyway, my sergeant got up, started talking about his wife. In a very derogatory way. And I looked at the majors and captains and lieutenants. I thought, boy, well, you're not going to stop to him. Not one of them, not one of them got up and stopped him. I stood up and I reprimanded him in the side of the room, in front of all the whole company. And I told him he should be ashamed and he should apologize for what he said and what he did. I said, you took oaths under God that you would honor your wife and cherish her as long as she lived. Boy, that got all of us attention. You know what they did right after work? We dismissed and we went to our box. You know what happened the next night? They all come over there and gathered around me. I saw two of my sergeants trust the Lord as their Savior. You think that don't change the whole thing? In this day and time, it seems like nobody is willing to be there to be different, to stand up for the cause of Christ. And yet, God gave all of us the same opportunity. And He blesses us. Go out there and witness every day and see if you don't come back with results. It's not near like it used to be. I remember going out many times and leading six to the Lord and coming back and being on Sunday and sitting and baptized for the Lord because they've trusted Christ as their Savior. But today, you didn't talk to them, they don't even know that much about God. You have to, you have to start with eight from zero to nothing to try to lead them up to where they realize about the things of God. Isn't that right, Brother Bill? Don't you, I know everybody has the same trouble. I know that. Because they just don't, they don't get it. That shows you how America is going to be a heathen nation if we don't turn it around. We have the Word of God. Thy Word have I hid in my heart that I might not what? Sin against thee. Yeah. When I went to work full time at the old Baptist Church, listen to this, as a social pastor, every pastor that had been there tried to get me on the staff. I never did come until a brother little was the pastor. And I think back over all the messages I have pastors through the neural gates, through the years, what it meant to me, what it did, and that was for us. God's good. All the time, all the time he's good. But listen here. I was around 50 years of age when I come on from the social pastor. After Brother Little left, Brother Ben Jordan, Bob Persendak was there. Brother Bob Persendak came in 1982 from Hammond, Indiana. He, look here, he was going to Purdue University. He changed, he changed and went to Hawes Anderson Company. Now he started studying to be a minister, a preacher. And you look and tell me if he don't shell the word every time he gets up. He does. A lot of people don't know how to tell. Hey, if you read the Bible all the time, you know what the word of God is. Thy word. Thy word. Isn't that right? And I let me say this. I have been a witness. Since that first day I went back to school. And the boys jumped on me and said, 
but you can't know you're saved. You didn't lose it. Show me one place in here you lose salvation. It's not in there. If he said, I give you everlasting life, he gives you everlasting life. Everlasting life. Everlasting. It means everlasting. Into the ages. And when I know God, he's real. I threw away all, nearly all my notes, but hey, I just wanted to let you know my whole steps. If I was going to characterize it to you today, from the time I got saved, I started trying to walk in his steps so it makes sense to other people as I pass by. And when I pass by, I was hoping that others would know Christ. And they did. And it made a real joy and a real peace in their heart. I've had so many of my close friends call me. It never hurts you, does it? When somebody cares about you, they care about you. Amen? Amen. I'm sure glad to see you here. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you, husband. <laughs> Amen. Heavenly Father, we're thankful tonight for thy truth and thy word, for thy actions that we admit to praise you, to serve you, to love you, to care about you, and to be blessed of all things. I know that we're going to be with you one day shortly. Amen. Amen.